I mentioned earlier that I, I don't like the fact that everyone always said there, there's nothing to do in this town. Right. I love Port Huron. It's my home. I think we're very lucky to live right here on this beautiful blue water. And I want more people to want to stay here and not transplant themselves elsewhere. And one thing that I can do to help that is by providing a place for people to have fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Total Michigan, where we interview ordinary Michiganders doing some pretty extraordinary things. I'm your host, Cliff Duvenois. I've done a couple interviews in the Port Huron area, and I was actually very happy to get this place on my list because of one thing that came to mind was like, this could almost pass as the unofficial center of Port Huron because there's just so many great things to do here, including art and getting people to create art. And that is just something that really appeals to me. So today we are sitting with the owner, Carol Brooks, of Foundry and the Hallway Entertainment in Port Huron. Carol, how are you? I am great. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So why don't you just take a couple minutes and just share with us, what is Foundry? Foundry is the home for art and entertainment here in Port Huron. It used to be, it as in the building, used to be a nonprofit art gallery. And that um, went really well for a few years. And then during COVID, you know, things kind of slid. Yes. And my original business was the Hallway Entertainment, which is escape rooms and game shows and interactive entertainment. And I heard about um, um, the studio kind of having troubles, and I decided I wanted to come on in and add my own twist and spin on it. So instead of keeping it just an art gallery where people come to shop or observe art, I twisted it as I do and made it more of an art and entertainment center where people are coming to do and immerse themselves in art. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. And we are definitely going to explore that a lot more. Before we jump into that, why don't you share with us, where are you from? Where did you grow up? I grew up right here in Port Huron. Nice. And now, did you go to did you go to college? Did yeah. You, okay. Where'd yeah, you go? Yeah. So I went to Grand Valley State. Okay. And um, I have a degree in photography and in history. I thought I wanted to be a high school world history teacher. I did that for a couple <laughs> years and decided that wasn't really my cup of tea. And my big plan was, you know, in the summertime to shoot weddings, which I did do for a while. And then. Um, too many bridezillas came my way, and I decided Ooh, that I yes. lost my love for that passion and, uh, you know, I had to pivot and go in a different direction. Now, why did you decide? Okay, so a couple questions here. First off, why go to Grand Valley? Um, they have a really they have a really good photography program, and that's what I wanted to do. As a high schooler, um, I started babysitting for a woman, and she um, owned a photography studio. And so orders were always coming in while I'm watching her kids. So I would start checking in orders. And then one day her second photographer for a wedding um, was sick. And so she called me and she's like, any chance you can just take this camera, I'll set it on auto and you just you just need to shoot some some pictures uh, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> and uh, I said, yes. <laughs> and it turns out I had a little bit of a, a natural eye for composition. Oh, cool. So I ended up um, taking that on as my, my job in high school and I fell in love with photography from there. Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And what was it about history? So my mother is a British. She moved here from Wales when she was 25, and she never went back um, except for to visit our, our family. Sure. And I was, you know, drug over with her. <laughs> and castles were my favorite thing to explore. They still are. And so I think that's where it started, uh, going over there and seeing Stonehenge and seeing castles and, um, I mean, the ruins and the ones that are turned into museums. It's just... It really piqued my interest in art and in history. So if I had to pinpoint where it came from, I would guess it's that. Okay. Now, when you talked before about, you know, going out and teaching history, was that where you, did you move back to the Port Huron area and start doing it there? Did you go to, did you teach someplace else? So um, at the time when I graduated college, which was in 2011, getting a teaching job in Michigan was pretty difficult. They were really highly sought after. Um, Michigan was the highest paid teachers uh, at, at that time, or close to some of the highest paid teachers. So I ended up in Lakeland, Florida, where oh, wow. yep, where the Tigers have their spring training. Mm -hmm. And I taught at a high school down there for a couple years before I really missed Michigan. 
and um, I had to come back. And so I moved to Royal Oak and I lived there for a couple years and I found a job at a company called CrowdRise, which was um, an online fundraising platform for charity. Oh, cool. And I used to tell people um, that we were like GoFundMe, but better because instead of helping, you know, Joe down the street uh, fundraise for bagpipe lessons, which was a real thing, um, <laughs> uh, we were actually helping nonprofits. So we, I worked directly with the American Red Cross and um, the American Diabetes Association, the Boston Marathon, um, lots of really cool, great causes. And I loved that job. Right. Uh, but the joke ended up being on me because we became a competitor of GoFundMe. And oh. seven years ago, um, GoFundMe came in and they bought CrowdRise out and a bunch of us um, were laid off. And I loved that job. And I'd been there from some of the beginning stages of it. And I felt sure. a little salty. So I thought to myself, well, you know what? I'm going to go start my own business because then I won't <laughs> fire myself. And uh, I just looked around Port Huron and um, thought, what do we need? What's missing? And as a person that grew up here, I always heard, and I still do to this day, which kind of breaks my heart, but I always heard people say, there's nothing to do in this town. Mm. And I wanted to change that. So um, the first thing I started with were the escape rooms. All right. So let's go back and unpack a couple of <laughs> things I know. There's here. a lot of information in that little story. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And I'm, I'm totally digging your, your, your journey here. And uh, yeah, you're right. You know, you become an entrepreneur, you, got, you can't fire yourself. No, no. Um, That'd be pretty bad. <laughs> so now let me ask you this, because you're like, well, you know, I'm just going to try an entrepreneur and just go out and do this. So did you have, you know, I guess the first question is, did you have like, is there anything in your background that pointed and just said, you know, one day... No, I mean, the the photography. So I started working for that photography company when right. I was in high school. And then um, when I went away to college, I did photography to help put myself through college. Um, my mom helped too, but that was one of my contributions to go. it, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I would shoot weddings and senior portraits and babies and all of that stuff. So um, yeah, I, I, I guess I had that as my first business. Yes. And um, yeah. So now you've you've come back to Port Huron. People are telling you there's nothing to do here. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to change that. Yeah. So you got into escape rooms. Yeah. I, Where did uh, that come from? Well, so I had just, at that time, I had just been to an escape room in, in Royal Oak, one of the first ones that had opened. Right. And I loved it. And I just thought that was a cool idea that the thumb needed. Um, a lot of a lot of Port Huron people will drive down to Royal Oak or Detroit to go find unique things to do. And I've always wondered, well, what about the people past Port Huron in Lexington and Port Sanilac? Well, are you going to drive all the way to Detroit for an evening of fun? Yeah. Probably not that often, but you might make it to Port Huron. So I decided to, to give it a try, and it worked. And um, I literally, the first... The first escape room that I built, I set it up in my dining room. <laughs> yep. And I invited my friends over, a different group, some of them, different nights. I love nights, this. I love this. And had them test out the puzzles. And it turns out I had a, a bit of a knack for coming up with these things. And then I ran with it. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a quick step back because there's there could be somebody that's listening to this that has no idea what escape room is, or maybe they've driven down the road and seen it and they're like, what is that? So why don't you share with us, what is an escape room? So escape rooms have evolved. They literally at first were a room where you were trying to escape it by solving puzzles. But um, that storyline kind of got played out over the last 10 years or so of escape rooms being in existence. And now they are more interactive stories. So imagine you and your group of friends are stepping into a room that has a story and you get to play and interact with the things in that room to complete the story. So for example, one of our rooms is, um, is an airplane and you sit down in these airplane seats and you see the, the, the screen and a flight attendant comes on the screen and she tells you, oh no, we've passed through some sort of time warp and everybody on the plane except for you have disappeared. 
You have um, one hour to break into the cockpit and initiate the landing sequence to save the plane. Good luck. And then the screen goes blank and you and your friends are in this room that feels like you're in an airplane and you get to pick things up and touch and uh, play and interact with the things in the room while using your brain a little bit. Right. And um, yeah, kind of complete the story. Some people will uh, complete the tasks within the hour. Some people won't. And um, it's just a, a good, good, fun, wholesome experience. And because of the fact that you're solving puzzles, so like, for instance, one of the things is that there could be a lock on a door. Mm -hmm. So you have to put these puzzles together and arrange and work together as a team to figure out like what's the combination mm -hmm. to work this lock. Yeah. And it's not just um, puzzles that you think of in terms of like, like crosswords and Sudoku or like physical jigsaw puzzles. I'll give you an example from one of my past rooms, so it won't give anything away on one of the current rooms. Okay, all right. Um, we had a sunken freighter room uh, a couple years ago. I like to have local history-based rooms. Nice. That's how I got my start, was with a Thomas Edison-themed room. But in the sunken freighter room, we had this um, giant growler, and it was glued down to a table. And in the growler, if you looked closely, there was a small key on a cork, attached to a cork. There's nothing that you can stick into the growler to get that key out. You can't lift the table or lift the growler to shake it upside down to get the key out. There was a magnet in the room, so some people would try to take the magnet and magnet the key up the growler and out. Um, but if they paid enough attention, they would see that there were jugs of water and a funnel in the room. Just enough that if they were to pour all of the water into that growler, the key and the cork would float up to the top and they could just pick it out. That is so cool. So it's not just puzzles in the way that you think of it. Right. It's really like using what you've got there, you know, around you. Yep. To be able to put it together. Oh, I love this. Yeah. I absolutely and love this. And I try this. to make it so that there's something for everybody. There's the person that's logical and they they think in a linear fashion. There's the person that thinks outside the box and they need the, the water puzzle, right? Um, so I try to have something for each type of, of brain in each room. Right. So you've decided that you're going to go into escape rooms. How did you get started? Oh, wow. Well, like, like I said, the, the dining room example, I, um, I set up puzzles in, in my room, in my dining room and had my friends come over and play it and realized that, that I could do this. Um, and then I went to, some local entrepreneur meetings right? and I found a property that was available and I negotiated a step up rent. So I started paying a little and then um, after got a little momentum going, I then paid more and then a little bit longer and I paid more until eventually. Um, Everything's I, negotiable. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is a good lesson for people that are trying to start a business. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask Yes. Don't be afraid to ask a question. I mean, the worst thing people can say is no, um, and they might say yes. So that that's how it started for me. And then um, after not even a full year in that first location, um, we outgrew that space. And I that just, is incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts. And um, yeah, so then I bought a building just around the corner from here and expanded. Um, and then a few years later, bought this one and expanded again. <laughs> so what was your very first escape room? The very first escape room was Thomas Edison themed because Port Huron is the boyhood home of Thomas Edison. Yes. And the story goes that he worked on the Grand Trunk Railroad, which ran from Port Huron down to Detroit. Mm -hmm. And he sold newspapers and candy and, and stuff like that to the passengers on the train. Um, the story also goes that he got in trouble for having experiments in one of the cars on the train. That's right. Yes. And that's where he got thrown off of the train by his ear and he lost, he, he went deaf in one of his ears. So I took all of that real history and rolled it into a fake story of time travel. You, for example, time travel back to this train car and you need to stop Thomas Edison's experiment from blowing up um, before you get back to the future. Right. What did it feel like when the first people oh my gosh. went into your, I mean, they bought your tickets. They're like, hey, we're looking forward to this. We love to do escape rooms. They they bought it and there they go. And you're standing there going, holy cow. I can't tell you how good that feels. And that's why I'm still doing this today. 
because the feeling of somebody buying a thing that you created from nothing is incredible. Yes. And then take it a step further. Not only did they buy it, but then they loved it. It's the best feeling. I mean, it's really, really the best feeling. <laughs> nice. I feel I feel very lucky that that's um, what I get to do. Nice. Uh, for our audience, we're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsors. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk to Carol about uh, the Foundry and everything that you can experience when you come here. We'll see you after the break. Hey, if you are enjoying these great interviews, just take a moment and go to TotalMichigan.com slash join. And you can get these episodes sent directly to your inbox because there's a lot more great stories coming. See you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Total Michigan, where we interview ordinary Michiganders doing some pretty extraordinary things. I'm your host, Cliff Duvenois. Today, we're sitting with Carol Brooks of Foundry, located in Port Huron, as well as the Hallway Entertainment. And Carol, before the break, you were sharing with us a story about how you had you had rented a spot, your your escape room was starting to really take off, you were outgrowing the space quickly. And I know earlier in our interview, you talked about how there was a nonprofit that had this building here that we're currently in now that you currently own. How did you go from that one space that you had to being in this building? That's a great question. So after I outgrew the rented space, I bought a building that if you could see through this wall behind me, it's right back there. Mm -hmm. And um, the hallway entertainment, the escape rooms and game shows ran out of that building for three or four years. And I heard that this building that we're in right now was going for sale. So I put in an offer to to buy it. And I had looked at what had worked really well for them and what um, they struggled with and kind of formulated my business plan around that and what would mesh well with my already existing business of, of the escape rooms, right? you know, the, the interactive entertainment. And so the first thing that we started with was pottery classes because that's something that they had done really well. And um, so did your offer include like leave the pottery stuff All the behind? kilns were left behind oh, with the building. Oh, that is so cool. Yes. Yeah. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, I reached out and found some some pottery instructors. And now we started with um, just like one-time classes where you'd come in for a couple hours with your friends and have fun. And then um, from there, people enjoyed it. And we extended it to three-week and five-week classes. So now we have a mixture of of um one-time classes, five-week classes, beginner level, intermediate level, seasonal things. Um, in front of us right here, I've got uh, ceramic pumpkins where um, our instructors threw the pumpkins and then we branched out to have classes where people just come in and paint them. Right. So we have like the whole spectrum of, of pottery classes, painting, throwing, hand building, one time, five week, and it's been a pretty cool uh, journey. The one thing that caught my eye, especially going over your, your website for this, is the cosmic pottery. Okay, so we just launched that, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, our talk first, to us about that. Our first one hasn't even happened yet. It happens on Friday. Oh, We're cool. sold out. Sold out to the point where we added, I think, two more classes the following day. Sold those out and added five more for March 16th. So there's still a few spots there. Um, but think of cosmic bowling but with pottery. So yes. we've got black lights and neon paint and um, you're in the dark with some fun music and you're having a full experience that's totally different from anything else you're going to find while making something that you'll be able to take home. <sighs> that is so cool. Now, the one thing I do want to get to is the painting yeah. aspect because you've got different painting things going on. We're in the splat room mm -hmm. that you call it. Yep. So where did this idea come from? Talk to us about that journey. Well, so this one's kind of kind of goes back to people always ask me, how do the escape rooms and, and foundry with the art experiences intermingle? And I've always kind of had a hard time explaining that, except for the fact that they're both interactive entertainment. You know, you're yes. you're immersed in it. Um, but a couple years ago, my cousins in Scotland, a, they uh, they said, Carol, you're, it looks like you're doing so great with your escape rooms. We want to do that. Will you help us? So I went over to Scotland, helped my cousins open their first escape room over there. <laughs> and so you're international. Yeah, I love it. So my games that were designed here that Thomas Edison, when I was telling you yes. about, um, they tweaked it 
and tweak the characters and whatever and made it a Mary Queen of Scots game because um, that's right about where they live. Right. And anyway, they're doing so great. Last year, they opened a splatter studio. And I said, okay, guys, you took an idea from me. I'm going to take an idea from you now. Yeah. And so I um, started doing the splat stuff just like they had done. And um, we started with a space that could only fit two people to see if it would catch on. Sure. People loved it. And so we expanded into this whole room. And now we can fit 10 people at a time. So a birthday party. Um, and then, yeah, people come in and they they splat paint with a paintbrush. Um, we have guns that they kind of like squirt. The, right. the canvases um they can pour paint um there's one over here beside you where they get to like squeeze the bottle and and drip it and it's just i like to explain it as a less angry rage room <laughs> well so i could just see that you you, you have people come in here mm -hmm. and it's like cool i get to throw paint but do you give them any kind of like instruction or anything else? Because, you know, the thing is, and we kind of talked a little bit about this at the beginning. If everybody threw every color of paint at a canvas, it would be like brown Play-Doh. There you go. Yeah. You know, the kids that just mix all the Play-Doh together and it becomes brown. Yeah. Yeah. So we try to give them a little bit of explanation at the beginning. Um, maybe only use, you know, like three or four colors at a time so that you don't end up with too much. Um, maybe paint your canvas background so that instead of just having colorful paint on a white background, you've got something else. Um, think about if you want to add words afterwards, like the one behind you says lucky and it's all green and black and gold. Um, so to think about some of those things. And then we give you a practice canvas before you get your, your big one so you can try out the different techniques. Um, I mentioned a minute, a minute ago that we got the brushes and the guns and the and the squirt bottles, and they all have their own unique look and flair, and um, it's good to just practice it and see what you like. Why is the immersive experience into art so important to you? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I, I... I mentioned earlier that I, I don't like the fact that everyone always said there, there's nothing to do in this town. Right. I love Port Huron. It's my home. I think we're very lucky to live right here on this beautiful blue water. And I want more people to want to stay here and not transplant themselves elsewhere. And one thing that I can do to help that is by providing a place for people to have fun. And... Um, I'm not a big screen and technology video game person. I don't watch TV. Um, I want people to play and interact with things in the real world and remember what it is to just have, have fun again like you did when you were a kid. Be creative. Yeah. Use your imagination. Yeah. I don't know. It, it just I don't, It's always just kind of spoken to me. We talked about the paint room. We talked about the different techniques here. But that's not all. No, no that's it's not, not all. Because <laughs> when you were taking me on the tour of this place, I was like, "Man, what doesn't she have here?" That's why I kind of was like thinking, "This is like the unofficial center." Yeah. Of Port I, Huron. I love that. Can we get Can we get that written somewhere? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can even trademark it too. Uh, okay. So you also have the listening room here. Yes. Yep. So um, again, my idea is immersive entertainment and an art, right? Art is not just photography and painting and pottery. Art is music and dancing. So the rooms upstairs, we have musicians come in for songwriters rounds where we'll have three or four musicians on the stage and they talk about a song that they've written and then they play it. And then the next musician goes and then the next musician goes and then they start back over. It's an idea that they have in Nashville. Um, and so we're doing that here. Uh, and then we have ballroom dancing and line dancing, comedy, and drag queen bingo. So all of these just different forms of art in a way that maybe most people don't think of as art, if that makes any sense. Right. Oh, so this is getting better and better by the minute. Now, to do all of these things, obviously you can't do everything yourself. No, no, no. So no. are there artists in the community that are helping you out, whether that's like musicians that come or sound engineers, or in this case, like we're in, the, we're in the splat room. So do you have artists that are local that come in and help share their expertise? Yeah, we have, um, we have about 10 employees here. And so oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yes, so we've yes. got one um, manager for pottery and he 
that's his baby back there. He gets to decide how to run that ship. Um, we have another another manager for for Foundry, and so she handles um, like the splat and upstairs uh, the the dancing and and um, listening room classes. And then um, we have another one for mosaic and stained glass. So I maybe create and initiate these things, but then I hand them to somebody to run with so that they're getting the love and attention that they need. Because if it was all in my hands, um, that would be too much for one person to do. (laughs) Yeah, because photography is your background. So yes. have you tried to teach any photography classes here? No, but and I didn't even tell you this in the in the walkthrough because I'm not uh, fully out there doing it yet. But um, I just went to Italy uh, for like a pre-honeymoon. Right. And as I was wandering around, I saw this um, art gallery where they were taking pictures of people's irises. Okay. And so, of course, I went in and did it. And it was so cool. And now I have this piece of artwork with my and my new husband's um, irises together. Um, and it's, uh, it's it's breathtaking. It's really cool. So I whipped out my camera and I'm going to start doing that as my own thing here. Um, people will be able to book and get their or their kids or whoever's iris picture taken and then blown up into their own unique piece of artwork. Oh. Man, this is one of those interviews I could see for the next four hours. Yeah, because when we're talking about like groups coming in and everything else, one of the things that really struck me is the fact that you actually serve beverages here too. Yes. So it's like sip and splat. Yes, yes. Talk to us about that. So um, it took 18 months to get a tavern license. I could have had two babies in that amount of time, you know? Oh, man. Welcome uh, to the government. Goodness yep. gracious. That was that was a long process, and I almost gave up, and I don't give up on things very often. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it would be a good compliment. I, I don't want to own a bar or a restaurant um, because I don't want the focus to be on eating and drinking. I want the focus to be on the activities. But wouldn't it be great if you could come in here and throw paint and have a white claw? Or a glass of wine. Yes. And so now you can. And same thing with pottery classes. You you can gather a group of friends. So we have scheduled classes. But if you have four or more people, you can book a private party. Carol, if somebody is listening to this and they do want to, you know, maybe book out a room or check out, you know, what it is that you're doing, whatever, what's the best way for them to do that? So if you um, want to book one of our existing experiences, so something that's on the calendar already, um, like we host uh, two stained glass classes a month, and those are just pre-booked out. You would go to foundryporthuron.com, and then there's a book here or a booking site button. You click on that, and you'll be able to see everything that's already available. Now, if you want to schedule a private party, um, and you have four or more people for any of our events and things that we do, um, you would email us at hello at foundryporthuron.com. And then if you're looking to do an escape room or the game shows or any of that, murder mystery parties, any of that, you would go to the hallwayentertainment.com. Excellent. Carol, uh, it's been awesome having you on the show today, and we're going to have to have you back again. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we're always changing things, too. So if we do this again in a year, I'm sure I'll have four more things to talk about. See, there we go. That's another reason why. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for our audience, uh, you can always roll on over to TotalMichigan.com and click on Carol's interview and get all the links that she mentioned above. We'll see you next time when we talk to another ordinary Michigander doing some pretty extraordinary things. We'll see you then.